Ohai. I hope you saw that shirt. In case you didn't, here it is bigger. So you got the Chuck Norium down there, and it's disturbing the whole periodic table. You got the, the pink for the most dangerous element in the universe. It's radioactive, it's highly unstable, because, uh, you know, it's Chuck Norium. Chuck Norris! So everyone knows I'm a dork. I like my science. In case you don't, in case you don't believe me, when I was younger, my idea of a good book was any science book. You know, like Science Encyclopedia, uh, How Things Work, anything that had to do with space and crazy stuff that nobody understands. In high school, I took all kinds of AP uh, math and science classes. It still makes my day if I can teach someone something about math or science and they actually want to learn about it. Let me know if you want a lesson in calculus, physics, or anything else that's back on that bookcase. But even where I'm at, having learned so much about science, it still baffles my mind, the stuff that we're able to do. I hope somebody from my research group is watching this because we just had a discussion in the past week that I want to talk about. Like every week, we had a group meeting where somebody presented their, their recent work and we were having a discussion about the results of a specific machine. Now, I did not know we use this machine, but what it's able to do, you give it a sample, a chemical sample, and it spreads it out by molecular weight. Molecular weight being the, the mass of these different molecules if you forgot your chemistry class. So it spreads it out by molecular weights and then what you can do if you want to narrow down, you select that small range of molecular weights and it will use some sort of magic, I guess mostly magnets, electric fields, and, and uh, other stuff like that. But it will take all the molecules in that narrow band of weights and section them off in this other area. Somehow move them away from, from everything else. I don't know, with like little tweezers it seems like. Move them over here and then throw a lot of energy at it to fraction them into into these little smaller pieces. What, what, what do you mean you can do that? That's ridiculous. I don't have molecular sized tweezers to, to move things around. I don't understand. That's ridiculous. And there are all kinds of machines like that. We have a laser in the physics department, I know, that can get stuff up to the temperature of the sun. We have a particle accelerator over in Europe that's making black holes and simulating big bangs. What the heck is that? That's ridiculous, how can we do that? And now, more recently, Stephen Hawking has his own show, and he's saying that they're aliens or something like that. He's saying we shouldn't go out looking for aliens because they're probably gonna be violent and, you know, wanna take us over in some sort of movie type situation, I don't know. And speaking of movies, with all we know about science, it's hilarious to go and watch movies. Um, let's, let's talk about a couple of them. Independence Day. You know, al aliens come down Stephen Hawking style, they want to take over the, the world, and who knows what they want to do. And basically, our solution is to send Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum up to their little alien space station and do some little virus hacking, uh, blow up alien spaceship, and then they, they zoom off and it blows up and they do all that. I don't know, you would think that these advanced aliens have somewhat figured out firewalls and might be able to protect that, but, you know, that's just me. Okay. And uh, I just saw Iron Man 2 in theaters. It was excellent. I, I thought it was great. Uh, good movie. Scarlett Johansson rocks my world. Um, there's this one part in the movie, though. There were five of us engineers sitting in the back of this IMAX theater. And uh, Tony Stark, who's the Iron Man guy, wants to invent a new element. He's doing, like, Minority Report style, you know, moving stuff around, trying to figure out what's going on. But he does all this, and... He figures out this new element somehow. Then he constructs this particle accelerator, like the one I was just talking about. Constructs a particle accelerator in his basement, and then somehow makes this new element. I even enjoyed it because in the movie, after he does it, he, he says to himself, that was easy. And it's like, really? Anyway, besides an otherwise awesome movie, that part was just hilarious. So over here in David's corner, what am I trying to say with all this? Well, basically it comes down to this. Some people seem to have no idea what science is. <coughs> Hollywood. <clears throat> what? Some of us have learned a fair amount, and me personally, I am still amazed by what we can do. And even though we know as much as we do, there's still plenty to discover. Even Stephen Hawking 
doesn't know whether aliens are going to be friendly or not, whether they're going to want to blow us up or uh, have have a bag of ho-hos with us. No, nobody really knows. But in the end, what it comes down to is science is awesome. And now, the video of the week. This video that I'm going to show right here, or down below if you want to click it later, um, it's for anybody that enjoys watching or partaking in breathing helium at parties or whatever you do. Maybe you do it for fun at home. Um, but go ahead, check it out. I enjoy it. Not only helium, but there's a little extra special thing at the end, so check it out. It's highly enjoyable. Um, please love science. It's great. And that's all the science for you this week. Um, my brother's coming into town later this week, and hopefully I can get another video out next weekend. If not, you can deal. Um, I may get something else out if that doesn't work out, but... Till next time, you stay classy, Internet.